Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. Quick video on a question a subscriber asked me. So, the effects of ecdysterone on my statin. So, here's a quick study that I'm going to break down later on in the video. But, long story short, there goes the effects of ecdysterone and IGF 1 on my statin expression. As you can see, there's a huge, almost 50%, it's actually about 40% drop in uh, my statin from the ecdysterone group and the IGF 1 group. But, as you can see here, huge drop in my statin and obviously these are c2 c12 cells there's no other natural compound in the entire literature that drops my statin this much right the next runner-ups are pretty much apicatechin and creatine but even they don't lead to such a huge drop in my statin anyway this is another episode of my statin monday where we talk about anything related to my statin and also file statin which is once again, the most important molecules and pathways in the entire human body when hypertrophy is the goal. All right, so for those of you guys who are new or who need a refresher, here's the summary on everything you need to know about myostatin. If you're already familiar with this part, just skip it, go on to the next chapter because I'm literally copying and pasting it from the prior videos. All right, so long story short, myostatin is a gene, it's a protein that your body makes. And its job is pretty much to limit how much muscle you could put on, right? If it wasn't for myostatin, we would all walk around like the fucking Hulk, right? So it does four main things. It stops protein synthesis. It increases protein breakdown. It lowers satellite cell activation. And it makes you insulin resistant, which obviously leads to less muscle, more fat. So pretty much it makes you skinny fat. Phylostatin, on the other hand, is another protein that your body makes, and it does the opposite of myostatin, right? It stops myostatin from activating its effects to its receptor. It also stops activating it. So this is the most anabolic molecule in the human body, phylostatin. Even more anabolic than testosterone. In fact, testosterone's effects are mainly mediated through phylostatin. Here are some examples of what happens when your myostatin levels are too high. For example, the reason why your legs shrink when you put them in a cast or you immobilize for a long time is because myostatin levels go up. The reason why HIV and cancer patients lose a ton of muscle so fast is also because the myostatin levels go up. And the reason why astronauts lose a ton of muscle mass in space is because, once again, when you go into space in a low-gravity environment, myostatin also goes up, right? So myostatin is the bad guy. If your goal is to maximize muscle growth. Here's an example of a rat at the bottom here. This is the control rat. This is a normal rat. And this is the rat that was genetically engineered to overproduce phylostatin and to also lack the myostatin gene. So as you can see, that's the biggest rat we've seen in, in research. Four times the amount of muscle as a regular rat, right? So, and once again, normal levels of testosterone, normal levels of androgens. It is so massive, it's not even funny. And here's what the rat looks like when it's actually alive. Straight brawly, dwarfing the other rat. And this is lean muscle as well, extremely low levels of body fat. This is the monkey that was injected with phylostatin, as you can see here. This is before the injection. This is only a few weeks after the injection, about three months after the injection. Absurd amounts of muscle growth. And this is the 10 year old kid who was lucky enough to be born with a myostatin deficiency. Once again, he has normal levels of testosterone, completely natty. But look at his physique at 10 years old, right? His parents were freaked out. They brought him to the doctor. And yeah, he's, he's healthy, perfectly healthy. Normal levels of androgens. Didn't even go through puberty yet. Yeah, he has more muscle than the average grown-ass man. Once again, this is what happens when you're lacking myostatin or you're overproducing phylostatin. And again, the reason why professional bodybuilders look so fucking huge is because one of the main effects of testosterone is to interfere with the myostatin pathway, mainly by upregulating phylostatin or increasing the activity of the IGF-1 pathway. Several studies also back this up. As you can see here, one of the most important transcription factors, in fact, the most important transcription factor for muscle growth is accurate one. You can see here the correlation is 0.999, which is, in short, the most important transcription factor for hypertrophy. And sure enough, myostatin blocks this gene. So you want to put on gains, you have to downregulate myostatin. You have to lower myostatin. Another study shows the same thing, the correlation with the amount of gains you put on after training and your ability to lower myostatin is negative 0.82, which is massive. Myostatin is also the reason why old women put on a lot less muscle than young men or old men after training, mainly because they have a hard time lowering myostatin even when they train. As you can see here, old men have a big drop in myostatin after training. 
Young men have the biggest drop in myostatin after training, which is why, again, young men put on muscle so fast. Young women, decent drop, but old women struggle to lower myostatin, which is why they struggle to put on muscle mass. And several other studies confirm this. As you can see here, one of the main reasons why women cannot get as big as men, even if you inject them with testosterone, is because their myostatin activity is way too high. Myostatin is also responsible for insulin resistance. So if you have a dad bod, you skinny fat, you have that tire around your belly, well, chances are you have very high levels of myostatin. Next, myostatin is also the reason why those who train with full body workouts or with high frequency tend to put on muscles so fast because the drop in myostatin after training only lasts for less than a day, right? The drop peaks at the eight hour mark and then slowly after that, myostatin goes back to baseline, right? It goes right back to fucking up your gains. So that's why those who train more frequently, such as full body workouts, nucleus overload, tend to put on muscle so fast, right? They're constantly keeping myostatin down regulated. Myostatin is also the reason why people who supplement with creatine tend to put on more muscle. It's not just the other effects of creatine, it's mainly that creatine also is a very, very powerful myostatin blocker. As you can see here, this is the drop in myostatin from the group that trained without creatine, and this is the drop in myostatin from the group that trained with creatine. Huge drop. And lastly, that's the reason why the World Anti-Doping Agency banned every single agent that drastically blocks myostatin or increases phylostatin. So if you want to lower my style, you're going to have to do it naturally. And I have a ton of videos on that. Just watch the playlist. All right, back to the actual study. Keep in mind, this is a very recent study. It's actually a review, 2021, from Dynan. And pretty much what they did was they exposed the C2C12 cells to different compounds. You can see here the IGF-1, agdesterone, and agdesterone combined with a bunch of other shit. But let's focus on just these two right here. So again, IGF-1, that's not surprising. We got roughly a 40 to 50% drop in myostatin. Once again, that's not shocking at all. We already know how GF1 does that. The shocking part is obviously like this around doing pretty much the same thing. But once again, this also shouldn't be shocking to you guys since we all know that like this one works through and obviously that's the receptor that's also responsible for estrogen's anabolic effects on igf1 and things like that and remember guys if you watch my videos you should not be shocked right you cannot anything that increases protein synthesis significantly right p value less than 0.05 is gonna have to reduce my stat right you guys should know this by now if you guys remember my little nerdy hypertrophy pathways right all the different pathways that lead to protein synthesis as you can see, obviously, the IGF-1 and mTOR pathways right here, which is the most important pathway for protein synthesis. I received the end of translation. And as you can see, IGF-1 is upstream of that pathway. And obviously, agdesterone, tachesterone, whatever, working through the estrogen receptor beta also activates AKT, which is, again, part of the mTOR pathway. And remember, the myostatin pathway is always going to be opposite of the IGF-1 mTOR pathway. So whenever you activate this pathway, you downregulate this one and vice versa. You cannot have substantial protein synthesis without blunt and myostatin, right? Because again, myostatin activating through SMAD is always going to cock block AKT and mTOR. So once again, this shouldn't be surprising to you guys. And that's why I've been telling you guys year after year for what, almost 10 years now, like this one is no joke. And I'm glad that it's catching steam. It's finally becoming popular now, especially with Derek popularizing turkisterone, right? But again, you guys shouldn't be shocked, right? This is old news. And this is also not the first study that shows like this one's effect on uh, myostatin. If you want, I could cover the other ones in future videos. Now, I'm not going to get into dosage and, you know, the foods you get it from and things like that. I already covered that in the like, this one video. Check that one out. So please stop asking redundant questions and stop asking questions I already answered a million times. I don't want to see a single question about me and where should I get like, this one from? I've already answered that, guys. You guys know I'm anti-supplement, right? I I prefer to get all my shit from food. Same thing with my clients, same thing with my friends, right? Not just because I don't trust supplement companies, which obviously I don't, but mainly because you're getting everything, guys. You're getting the calories, you're getting the vitamins and minerals, and 90% of you motherfuckers are deficient in vitamins and minerals anyway, so you're getting the best bang for your buck, right? It's cheaper, it's safer, in some cases it's more bioavailable, and you don't have to worry about, oh, am I still natty from doing this? If you have to ask if you're still natty after eating a bunch of spinach and quinoa, then you got bigger issues to worry about. But anyway, I wanted to keep this video short, guys. Yes, Agdesteron does reduce myostatin. That shouldn't come as a shock. But now, once again, keep in mind, these are C2, C12 cells, but, but the pathway is obviously identical in humans, which is why they still use to this day. 
All right, guys, hope this video helps. See you guys in the next video. All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workouts, splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus of Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. All right, guys, I'm out of here.